in like top level science, when you're doing real grown up science, what are acceptable percentages? What are acceptable amounts of error? in an experiment before scientists start taking you seriously? So it depends very much on the experiment. It depends on, on what you can do. So in some cases, a 1% error might be acceptable in terms of how you compare to other values. And sometimes you might need down to the nth decimal place in terms of what they do at CERN, for example, at particle physics, they talk about five sigma in terms of standard deviations, five standard deviations away from the mean in terms of the, the probability of that result not being random. What we've done is that the lowest level, the absolute lowest level, it's chocolate. It's blowing holes in chocolate for goodness sake. So this is absolutely the lowest level. There's a whole statistics building upon statistics, but building upon statistics. Here, the thing that you used to get our error bar was those measurements we took from the chocolate. I can imagine in some experiments, you have all sorts of different measurements feeding into your final result. Even calculating your error bars must turn into a, a massive job. Yeah, so what you can do, uh, I was about to pick up the pen and start doing combination of errors, etc. First year labs, that's what students spend an awful lot of time doing, because of course, if you have different measurements that you've taken, say you're measuring with a stop clock, um, or you're measuring with a timer, and you've got, I don't know, a plus or minus, 10 milliseconds or whatever, plus or minus a millisecond, and you're also measuring a length, and you're also measuring a frequency, etc. Each one of those errors contributes, and an awful lot of part, an awful lot of the time, what an experimentalist needs to do in terms of honing their experimental design is go, which is my largest error? Which is the largest contribution here? Which is the one I really need to worry about and try to minimize? I was about to say, I'm now getting the impression that a lot of science isn't just doing the experiment and figuring out what's going on. It's altering your experiment to lower your error bars. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's precisely it. You want, to, you want to reduce the error bars as much as possible. That involves greater sensitivity. It involves trying to minimize the effects of noise. It, tr it involves calibration, and calibration is tedious. Um, for example, we measure tiny forces with a tiny tuning fork. We need to know the spring constant of that tuning fork. That's a really difficult experiment to, to get right. Um, and that has a certain error bar associated with it. And it's actually, in many cases, knowing what that spring constant is tells us about atomic forces and tells us what our limit in terms of um, uh, quoting those values for atomic force might be. Phil, if I gave you more chocolate bars, what sort of things would I see you doing to get these error bars down? Repeating the measurement time and time again, perhaps going to a slightly more um, sophisticated measuring tool than this, but having said that, what I'd really like to do is, well, is to somehow control the power I'm putting in and think carefully about the microwave design, think carefully about the placement, because that's a big splodge. What I'd really like to do is have a much more localized and think about, the t I do a much more controlled experiment in terms of thinking about the time, how much microwave energies involved here, trying to control that, that melting, thinking about how often do I open the, the door, how, in terms of letting things equ equilibrate. You can see, and it's, you know, the, the engineering component of it couples into the science component of it to form this feedback loop.